Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism. After a two-week hiatus, I am Max Kolbe from the uh, Escaping Atheism Project in Little Orthodox. And with me, as usual, is Rob from Deflating Atheism. How are you doing today, Rob? Hey, hey, I think that actually may be three weeks. I don't know. Yeah, probably been three weeks, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I had terrible technical problems, and I'm not kidding. The, the, sh the thing had to go back into the shop four times. Yeah, um, but I am back and I'm glad to be back and we are finally getting around to a video that we've been talking about doing for a couple months now by he goes by Professor Stick. Yes. Do we know anything about Professor Stick? Like, is he actually a professor of something? Because he sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, he got his doctorate in dance therapy, I think. Yes. No, <laughs> no uh, I actually stole that joke, by the way. But uh, uh there is a there is a, a a person who comments on my on my videos. His name is Mr. Spark, and uh, for a while uh, he's been asking me to uh, do a takedown of this video. So I thought this would this would be a prime material for you and I to do this. Now, uh, what prof what uh, Mr. Spark saw in this video? I don't know. The the video doesn't seem very special to me, quite honestly. But it was by request, so so we will we will take on this, this uh, Professor Stick. No problem. I, I, I'll, oh, um, shout out to Mr. Spark. I like him. He's one of our yeah. commenters. Um, and uh, yeah, in fact, this is far from the worst. He, he sounds like a young man who's got a chip on his shoulder and that that's his main issue. That's just how I'd see it. And plus, he's been indoctrinated real well in materialism. I'm, I'm giving a pre-boot still. I think he's very indoctrinated in, in materialism and not aware of it. During the middle of this, we'll get to it somewhere. He admits to, the, to his becoming an atheist being a process. That's a good thing for you, sir, because uh, I, when I became an atheist, uh, uh, eventually unbecoming an atheist and realizing that atheism makes no sense was also part of my journey. And hopefully as we go through this, we'll help you deprogram yourself from the unscientific materialist assumptions you have and your ignorance about the subject of religion, which is very deep. I've watched your video. You don't know anything about religion or theology, and you barely know philosophy. Uh, and you got a chip on your shoulder, which I hope you lose as you start to learn things. Now, Rob, we have a bit of a challenge here because this is a response video that uh, Professor did uh, Stick did to a, a bio, a molecular biophysicist named Mal Alistair McGrath, who also eventually became a Christian. Because I'm well, well familiar with, yes. He's a very, he's, a, he's an accomplished as a biophysicist, uh, which means he knows molecular biology, physics, and quite a bit else. He's also accomplished in theology because he became interested in religion and eventually decided it made sense to just conclude that there's a God and that a God, a universe with a God makes more rational and coherent sense than a universe without a God, which by the way, Professor Stick, it does. Um, so, but he, so he first, we hear Professor McGrath, and then he gives a response. So now it's going to be a little complicated because then we're adding a third response. How do you want to do this, Rob? Uh, I, I think it'll be fine just the way it is. I think it'll be fine just the way it is. I, I don't think it'll be have a, it won't be any more naughty than my responses to uh, TMM's responses to my responses, whatever. Yeah, fair so, enough. Yeah. So what I'll just do is I'll, he, what he does is he, uh, Professor McGrath talks, and then he does a response, and then we'll stop at the end of each of his responses. Uh, Unless somebody interrupts first, he talks really fast, so this is going to be fun. By, by the way, uh, before just before we went on live here, I, I I told Max about our strategy, and I think I think I may have uh, been ov overselling it a little bit, oh. but <laughs> I, I I fear our response to this video is going to get kind of samey after a while, in uh, that that we're going to have the basically the same response to his bundle of assertions that he throws out for like every paragraph. And our response is basically going to be, well, what is your justification for making these claims? We're going to have to try and make it more interesting than that. Let's see what we can do. I'll go ahead and start it if you're ready. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sure I'm sure this will be fun. By the way, Mr. Professor Stick, we don't hate you. We just make fun of silly people and you're being silly. So here we go. Here's this video of his um, Professor Stick's channel from two months ago. Here, Hopefully everybody can see and hear this. We got another video request, this time from half -Fi. It's basically just Alistair McGrath explaining how science turned him away from atheism. It's a short video, so let's just power through. When I was studying science at high school, I, I loved science. I thought, this is really wonderful. I also felt, look, this thing called religion is just anti-rational, anti-scientific nonsense. I mean, who, who believe this kind of thing? 
I think when I went to Oxford University to study science properly, I did chemistry as an undergraduate and then did research in molecular biophysics, I began to realize that things were much more complicated than that. What do you mean much more complicated than that? What's more complicated? The science? You said you did research, so your job entitled you to discover things that we have yet to know. Did you realize that the knowledge is much more complicated? More complicated than what? And how would anything being complicated turn you into a theist? God, I have so many questions. I don't actually think he has many questions. I think what he has is a lot of assertions. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, and a chip on his shoulder that leads us to ask, well, I mean, how serious are you? For example, he said, what do you mean much more complicated than that? Um, I, I listened to it carefully. What he means is it's more complicated than saying religion is superstition and fairy tale and then science has all the answers. That's what he meant, just so you know. Yes. Uh, able to parse his words easily. Apparently, that was a challenge for you, Professor Stick. <laughs> so so in, in addition to uh, uh, making uh, scientific claims, any sort of extra scientific claims would be making things more complicated rather than just throwing away all, all non-scientific claims, which would, which would necessarily make things simpler. I, uh... Religious explanations, I know, I know atheists don't really like this idea, a religious explanation is not, does not and is not meant to obviate a scientific explanation. No. For the purpose. And it never has been. Um, yes. About the entire history of science, I'm sorry if you've been indoctrinated into thinking otherwise, but indoctrinated would be the right word. Yes. Shall we continue? Mm -hmm. All right. I think one of the things I began to realize was that by its very nature, science was unable to answer a whole range of questions about meaning and purpose and identity. I'm sorry that you're disappointed by that, but science cannot answer those things for us. Science only deals with things we can prove. It involves gathering evidence to discover the reality of the universe. Things like meaning and purpose are not things that you can empirically prove or test, because by definition, those things are subjective, and science doesn't give a fuck about your feelings. I'm sorry that science wasn't enough for you, but to wander off and make shit up without any evidence or objectivity is not a good excuse to turn to theism. Okay. Okay, that was quite a pack of assertions. Yes. And our questions. Every one of those is an assertion, and every one of them shows a really shallow lack of any motivation to try to understand Professor McGrath's point of view or actually make questions. That's what I, but anyway, what are specific points he made there? Good Lord, what was that? Was uh, meaning and value and purpose, and anything that is not scientific is therefore subjective. Yeah, definitionally subjective. Really? Prove that, please. Um, um, like I said, we're, we're going to have to, we might get a little monotonous here, I'm afraid. But yeah. he's getting a, he, don't worry about it. We're not going to get monotonous, but he is showing a clear lack of understanding of anything he's talking about. I mean, really, um, um, I, I think it all rests under the assumption that he probably still thinks that God is a, an imaginary friend sky thick creature that throws lightning bolts or something. Yeah. Whereas what Professor McGrath is trying to prove to talk to you about, sir, is the thing that is making all of reality be here. Yes. Okay? The thing that is doing things like running the laws of physics and determining those rules and running the laws of phys laws of probability and that is responsible for science being able to work at all or for an intelligible universe to be here. Yes. Okay? That's uh, a concept that has been well understood for thousands of years, not just by Christians. Why don't you understand it? Would be my <laughs> until until a bunch of uh, uh, Aspia uh, uh, video game uh, fiends uh, monopolized the cultural conversation. This was common understanding. But <laughs> sorry about that. But I'm sorry. I, I'm gonna. You reminded me of something uh, when we were just beginning. I, I was having a conversation with a guy. Who was, who was, of course, he was completely uh, bullshitting, but he said, you know, science, science has proved that there's nothing beyond the realm of nature. Uh, and it occurred to me, these people don't have any respect for science either, because they will try to force science to be the mouthpiece of their completely extra scientific metaphysical beliefs. That's you know, true. they don't have any respect for science either when they're bullshitting about what science says. And science says a, a, a good deal less than they say it says. It shows a complete lack of uh, understanding of any of the rudiments uh, necessary to understand the topic. And a real, well, anyway. Yeah. Make a point there that we missed that we need to get back, circle back to? I don't think so. Should we just keep going? Yeah. All right. Let's just keep going. This isn't the worst I've ever heard. Let's see.
think I began to realize that although science was wonderful, it had its limits and that I wanted to go beyond those limits. In fact, more than that. I can see what you're saying. Oh, look, science can't tell us things that by their own very definition can't be objectively proven. So I'm going to turn to theism. Okay, look, if that really is the reason you're turning into a theist, then that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Those questions you propose, the meaning and purpose of life, can be easily answered without turning into a theist. No, mm -hmm. science cannot answer these subjective questions for you, so that's why you give yourself purpose and meaning. It may not be an absolute truth, but it can make yourself feel better. There are plenty of people who do that. Plenty of people who are not religious but come up with their own purpose to life. Ah! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I'll just stop. That's so many things at once, he said. <laughs> He throws that. He throws it at you, uh, uh, hard and fast. You know, he slings uh, it in really fast, and he probably thinks he's profound. But if he were really asking questions, he'd be slowing down and asking them one at a time. Careful. Well, first off, I'm sorry, but my first complaint is that he's not. Uh, uh, he's not letting uh, Professor McGrath just state his position. He's interrupting him and putting in all these claims that he never said. No one is saying that just because uh, uh, science. Can't prove any. Therefore, you must turn to theism. Let's let's wait till uh, he gets to that uh, uh, point. You know. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I mean, I want to give him a lecture right now on what is the prime mover and what are te what is teleology. Yeah, I do want to let. Uh, it according go. to him, those are things that you def definitionally, he said, you definitionally cannot prove. Yeah, okay, you definitely oh. also cannot prove that there's actual forces in physics because that may, that's just a theory and could be overturned. There could yeah. be something else. Um, you can't prove that mathematics is reliable. <laughs> you, 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 you can't prove scientific induction. You can't prove that, that past events are, are a reliable guide for future events. It's all kind of... Uh, uh. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, it, it, he, it's very clear that he's been indoctrinated in the very common belief of today that religion um, was this primitive idea where you would look at things and make up a fairy explanation. And now we've got now now somebody invented evidence and science. And <laughs> you're, 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 you really are. And by the way, most physicists, a lot of most physicists these days are spiritual. That's the funny. Yeah. Thing. Well, he doesn't. I, I, I love. It just reminds me of of like atheist republic. It's like it's like it's just all just a huge circle jerk. But they they throw these bones out to the atheists. They all respond. Well, I, in my opinion, religion was mankind's first attempt to explain. It's like okay, prove it. Yeah. Citation. Let's, yeah. Let's see the research on that. Let's look at the history. Let's look. Yeah. Let's look at where religion. Oh. <laughs> Son, you're actually really proud to be ignorant, apparently, because you think you know all you need to know, and you have no questions. You just have assertions. It's is it is kind of tiring. Should we listen to a few more of his assertions? Well, yeah, we are uh, the spark. Let's see, let's see, it's here. And you turned to theism. Both you and these people made up life purposes. The only difference is that they get it from themselves, while you get it from others. That's, okay, they made up life purposes. First off. Please give some kind of rational reason to assert that there is no higher purpose. You've just kind of asserted without proof that we've made up this explanation. So you, you're committed to the yeah. hypothesis. I hope you are not one of those idiots who just says you lack belief because you're clearly committed to the no God hypothesis. You think there isn't one um, uh, despite abundant evidence that there is one. Um, but I don't know. Is there anything else we need to say there? Or should we push? Oh, up? no, he says, he says, therefore, uh, uh, you know, uh, atheists have to have to draw their meaning from within themselves. And it, it, I guess it requires this courage and this authenticity to do so. Whereas we, uh, benighted theists just have to slavishly take it from others. Yeah, right. Like he doesn't take the authority of his teachers and his scientific references and his scientific heroes. Like he doesn't take them on faith. Yes. He doesn't take on faith all sorts of things that he reads in scientific peer-reviewed journals, by the way, which are no longer reliable. That's the dirty little secret. I, 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 th I think you're, you're almost chewing off as much as he is. At this I know, point. right? Well, he's just going so damn fast. <laughs> Uh, I had another point I wanted to make. Maybe we'll get to it. Oh, yes. Well, let, let us look at, at one Mr. Uh, Alistair McGrath here. Uh, uh, he was an atheist, and then he decided through his own reason, through his own experience, that the uh, uh, tenets of Christianity were correct. Yeah. No, no one forced that on him. He chose it himself. So why is his uh, experience less authentic than the atheists? And you know? 
stick and your fans, please go see on, on the Escaping Atheism channel my interview with Cy Gart, the molecular biologist, who, or actually he's a biochemist, um, the, the, the interview with the molecular biologist from Freedom from Atheism. I got an interview coming up with Sarah Salviander, uh, an astrophysicist. All these people discovered God while working on scientific projects. They're all scientists with PhDs and multiple peer-reviewed publications. What have you got, Professor Stick? Just curious. All right, rant, rant. <laughs> well, he has, he has a he has a nice little avatar there. He does. I like it. I love the him all fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah, he gets frowny. It's very intimidating. Yeah, let's go. If you're a human being, you are going to ask these deeper questions, which can't, science just can't answer unless it goes beyond its own natural and right limits. The reason people tend to ask questions like that is due to curiosity, but also due to fear. A life without an objective purpose sounds frightening. The idea that there isn't a supreme being watching over us can be frightening. These questions humans ask are less about finding the truth to the world around us and more about escaping the truth. This is why an idea that can give us a delusion to escape this truth is very attractive. But just because it makes us feel better doesn't make it real. That's okay. Claims, 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 claims. No proof. Yeah, I know. Um, again... His presuppositional atheism does him in every time, and it's oh, like, that's gonna that's gonna get under their claws. I know that. Yeah, presuppositional atheism. That's how yeah. that's how they got away with this in the first place, starting with Anthony Flew back in the seventies. Um, <laughs> presumed atheism, the correct rational default position, despite all the evidence against the atheist proposition. Um, and they, therefore, you can call a theism a delusion without even having to uh, uh, prove your case that, that God does not exist. Yeah. I would also note that what Professor Ed Fazer out in California said is true. Uh, we can flip this around. You want to believe that our belief in God um, is a comfortable delusion. Um, as Ed Fazer has pointed out, it's easy to see why people would want to avoid the thought that they are accountable to a higher being. And would, and would therefore prefer to believe we are in a random, causeless universe that just kind of runs itself and does that just because it does that, um, because they fear judgment of something higher than themselves that they don't control. Um, that's just as fair a thing to say about you as it is to, for you to assume that we uh, are just escaping into some comfortable delusion. Yeah. Uh, I, I uh, what? I, I, I've heard that before. I'm sorry. Do you, do you, uh, I was going to say no, something. Go ahead. No, uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, thing, I might have addressed this before, but the whole idea that, that atheists uh, uh, adopt atheism because they're looking for some a license, I, I never found that particularly compelling, but it, it, it does become obvious when debating with atheists. They are getting something emotionally from it. They are. They, it is not that they're they're looking at, at the objective facts with with this kind of dispassioned curiosity. No, they're they're definitely getting something emotionally from it. I think what they're getting is is a kind of power trip. It is this kind of a uh, is this kind of comfort of feeling that they are superior that they can look at the beliefs of ninety five percent of the population and just laugh at them as being a uh, 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 fairy tales. I think for for people who are insecure. That, that is a great source of validation, especially nowadays when there's this huge circle jerk surrounding atheism where you could just join, a, you know, enter league with all these other atheists who are, who are, who are you know, obviously laughing about fairy tales and invisible sky fairies and who reassure each other that they are the intellectual elite. I, I, I think that there is a, a sense of identity and, and a sense of uh, validation that they get from atheism. Yeah, I think some of them are just natural narcissists. Yeah. Um, whereas others, I think, are deeply insecure and wounded and are just afraid to trust anybody or anything. Um, that's just my psychoanalyzing, but hey. Again, I mean, it's it's as valid as, as what he's saying. Exactly. It's a, I got to prove you do Huh? Yeah, I'm not going to say uh, to an atheist, uh, therefore, because of my opinions, your beliefs are invalid. But through the course of, of, and I mean, I've logged in thousands of hours of debating with atheists, you tend to arrive at certain conclusions that their stated uh, uh, motivations are not their actual motivations. We've actually got scientific research on that, by the way. I'll make it available for anybody who wants. There's a lot of scientific research on the psychology of atheism, and it doesn't always redound well to atheists. It really doesn't. I mean, there's good things, too. But anyway, why don't we push on? Okay. 
Here we go. To me, that either I had to say this is just nonsense, or there is something there which science can't get access to, and I need to discover this. Objectively speaking, how do you even know that there's something beyond science? Science is a method, so you're essentially saying that there's potentially something that we can't discover with the scientific method. In that case, there's no reason to ever believe that something like that even exists. Science is the best method we what? have. What? I, l l l uh, let's see if they can finish this that the universe anything other than that cannot give reliable results so if you're looking for something that science cannot give then essentially you can't prove it's ever there to begin with and even if you do know for certain that something Whoa. beyond science exists there's no reason to ever turn to theism as a method to discovering this truth because there are like an infinite number of ways you could try to learn about reality the fact that you chose religion only shows that this is propaganda rather than an oh shut the fuck up <laughs> propaganda oh <laughs> You arrogant oh You're just <laughs> throwing this shit out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> arrogant. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this before. We have scientific data you can go look at that says after 10 years of the popular push for atheism, atheists are as unpopular as ever. Yeah. And continue the consider the possibility that you're just throwing out shit like that may be part of why people don't like you. Just I, a possibility. He, he, it sounded like he was trying to make a deductive argument at, in the beginning there. I don't know if you want to rewind and, and try to deconstruct. Yeah, if you want me to. You want me to try? Let's see. About uh, okay. I can. It doesn't hurt. This is such a dumb video anyway. Sorry, Professor Stick, but it is. Um, you're high on self-righteous. You're not uh, high on much else. Here we go. Uh, which science can't get access to, and I need to discover this. Objectively speaking, how do you even know that there's something beyond science? Sci I'm actually going to stop him there. Objectively speaking, how would you know there is anything beyond science? How on earth can you even ask that question? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay. Uh, nothing beyond. Is, is there any science anywhere in history? Can you show me where the science is in the U.S. Constitution? Can you show me where the science is? in um actually my banking transactions for god's sake are not science math isn't science in, yeah. in, in the very suppositions of science itself okay. in, in, in the uh in why is why is a one set of scientific laws actual and others are just potential you, i mean you already have that separation of actuality and potentiality how do you account of that within science and you know you know, and again, we, we're jumping with this whole, like, theism is just one of thousands of possibilities. No, it isn't. Yeah. So I'll explain something to you. Theism doesn't require Jesus or God or the Bible. I mean, those things are cool, but you don't, basic theism is not a Christian idea, um, um, uh, per se. Uh, when you posit that something is making the universe go a some way, you open your, your mind up to the question of what else, what other ways might the universe work? By the, by the way. No, what? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I've just kind of thought. I've just kind of stumbled on my, my new tactic. Whenever you get, oh well, which one of uh, the three thousand gods, or you just get oh, this yeah. from your parents or whatever. By the way, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm getting into more of a digression. Have you noticed atheists seem more and more to be retreating into this argument that you just learned it from your parents? Have you noticed that that is becoming more and more central to their arguments as time goes on? Actually, I don't know if I have noticed that one. It, that is a real desperate one, actually, yeah. um, for, for several reasons. It is true, of course, how, how you're raised will influence where you wind up religiously. Sure, it will. Yeah. That make religion itself irrational and wrong, however. Uh, in fact, yeah. I, like well, I, that's the thing. My, my tactic is, is just to say, okay, let, let's say for the sake of argument, every religion is wrong. Let's say every religion is wrong. That does not mean God does not exist. It still doesn't mean that. That's right. Yeah. Um, because God is not, uh, I mean, God is, <laughs> God doesn't have to be understood in the context of religion. Many people without any religion at all believe in God. You as, as I was at one time, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and so uh, the, you guys need to get this. God is the thing that's making the universe go. It's like we're in the matrix and we think god's making the universe go um it's it's really kind of that simple and that was, that's, that's, that's well new. supported by current physics yeah. <laughs> so. by the way that, that's max's new t-shirt by the way god is the thing that makes the universe go <laughs> I, it's the only thing i think gets through to these people who want to keep going where's the creature in the universe uh, 
you know, you know, or who want to sit there and talk about the laws of physics and things like probability. And I, I find over and over again when I shake them and I say, God's the thing making those go. Yeah. Back a couple of steps because that pops them out of their materialist mindset. Should I keep But going? Alistair McGrath has not even gotten to that point yet. And yet, and yet Professor Stick here is just shoving these words in his mouth, you know? Yeah. So it, it's not even really profitable to debate with a person like this who's just going to uh, straw man your position and make all sorts of presuppositions anyway, you know? Once again, we have here question begging after question begging after question begging. Since you're an atheist, you might want to go look up the fallacy of question begging. Um, and, and just... Assertion after assertion, it's it's, it's so tough. It's gish galloping is what it is, which is what some creationists do. He's doing uh -huh. thing. I'm just gonna pack on so much stuff. I gotta go. You know, it's almost impossible to catch up with him. And yeah. When he's one point nailed down. He's moved on to something else. Exactly. It, it's hurling the elephant. I have, especially with with a bunch of a, a neophyte atheists who have just uh, recently internalized all the kind of uh, propaganda. And they'll make like one stupid, especially like Facebook comments, they'll make like one stupid comment and you'll respond to that stupid comment. And then they'll ignore what you say and just say three more uh, uh, stupid things that are of course are all, all kind of articles of faith for the atheists. I call but, it the uh, clown car. <laughs> Yeah. The other honking, prove your extraordinary claim. There's no evidence. You just, well, 4,000, what's 4,000 religions are right? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Good <laughs> Lord. Good Lord. Talk it's like, so if I respond to this, you're going to have nine stupid things. It's like, okay, I have I have other things to do. Yes. All right. Should I keep going this or I Yeah, well, he's, he's still in the thick of this uh, deductive argument. So. I keep hearing her. You want to keep, skip ahead again? No, keep playing. Keep playing. Oh, shit. I skipped. Ah, sorry. I had to say this is just Let's just do it again. Or there is something there which science can't get access to, and I need to discover this. Objectively speaking, how do you even know that there's something beyond science? Science is a method, so you're essentially saying that there's potentially something that we can't discover with the scientific method. In that case, there's no reason to ever believe that something like that even exists. Science is the best method we have to discovering truth to the universe. Anything other than that cannot give reliable results. So if you're looking for something that's... But Okay, yeah, two two wicked bad assertions right there. Okay, most reliable way we know of knowing things are true, and if what was that he just tried to say about? It, it, it's 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 well, he wants to say it's 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 the most reliable way, which of course is an is an assertion without proof. But then he also seems to assume it is the only way of knowing anything. That's right. So so he's contradicting himself here, actually. Yes. Mathematics and logic, which are not yeah. science, those don't. Those, I, good Lord, you can't sign this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do I keep rolling, or do you have more? To we might have to bow out early here, but yeah. No, I, let's just let him keep galloping. Gish gallop, gish gallop, gish galloping. Atheist. By the way, what is what is that he has there? Uh, says something. Oh, it's a microphone. Uh, that's oh, oh, okay. a brand of microphone. Blue. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, anyway, let's see. Yeah, then essentially you can't prove it's ever there to begin with. And even if you do know for certain that something beyond science exists, there's no reason to ever turn to theism as a method to discovering this truth, because there are like an infinite number of ways you could try to learn about reality. The fact that you chose religion only shows that this is propaganda rather than an honest discussion. Well, okay, 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 okay. What, what, what are these, what are, again, it goes, this goes to a deeper issue and, and it's kind of beyond the bounds of our discussion here of the kind of atheist talking point that science is a way of knowing, but religion is a way of knowing. But the problem with the religion as a way of knowing is that it's not really a way of knowing. As like supposedly there's this multitude of ways of knowing and we have to sort through them. It's like, says who? I have never heard a religious person say religion is a way of knowing or faith is a way of knowing. And of course, atheists just assume like religion and faith Anything that is believed in faith are all kind of interchangeable. But yes, that that's kind of a whole other topic. I don't but know. Yes. He needs introductory teleology. He needs introductory classical philosophy, and he needs basic introductory theology, which yeah. sadly isn't taught very many much among in, in a lot of religious uh, communities now, which is part of the problem we're facing here. But 
that's another topic. Let's just push on and see. Well, well no, okay, let, let's just re, kind of recap is that there, there are a near infinite number of ways of knowing, but science is the most slash only reliable way of knowing. That's right. But there are many, there are many of them, therefore QED, there is no need to turn to religion, which is not even a point Alistair McGrath has made yet. Nope. All right, let's see what else Professor McGrath has to say and what Stick has to say. That atheism was just right and Christianity was simply wrong, superstition, nonsense. But as I began to look at Christianity more seriously... Which begs the question, why did you choose Christianity instead of any other religion? Hmm? I don't see Christianity being any more special. I began to realize... Okay. What if he just chose it because he was born to it? Doesn't sound like he was. Um, and I know. Yeah. Well, he was an atheist. He was an atheist for, for a long. A lot of atheists raised atheists these days, yeah. turning turning Christian. I'm sorry to tell you. Atheists have the lowest retention rate. Yes. They do lower than most religions, except creepy, weird cults like Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Um, the. Uh... <laughs> I, I I blanked out on what he was saying. Honestly. Uh... <laughs> Too, because he's so. Uh, let's let I'm gonna rewind it. What the hell? Uh, and if we don't finish this, uh, well, let's see. It's a question. Why did you choose? Oh, why did you choose Christianity? Okay. How well, yeah, there, there is a there is a, a solid uh, historiographical case to be made for uh, many of the central tenets of of Christianity. That's right, and we have scientific evidence for some of them. Just yes, you know, and we have lots of historical evidence outside the Bible for a lot of it. Um, ultimately, it is deciding what makes sense to you. But consider the possibility that he studied it and it made sense to him. Did you ever study it hard enough, sir, to decide truly if it made sense to you? And by the way, if you've read the entire Bible cover to cover, I don't think you've learned anywhere near enough. Um, because there's a lot to learn beyond just reading that simple book. Um, or going to Sunday school or, or, or whatever, having somebody ranting at you at the Bible. These are serious fields of inquiry. You might want to show some effort that you have tried to understand from a philosophical and theological view what's going on here. And, and, and a lot of atheists say, oh, well, when I was a kid, my, my mom always made me go to church. I said, okay, okay, what they fail to grasp that is that a, a church service is for worship. A church service is not necessarily for explaining the, the basis of the faith. It is for worship. No, and not all parents so just, You could have gone to church every single Sunday. That doesn't necessarily mean that you know what, what is the basis of your faith. That's right. And and he sounds like he's moderately high IQ. And I know, I know a lot of high IQ kids get frustrated because adults around them can't give them good answers. But there are ways to go and inquire and seek. Um, and not just to go to one source. Um, there's really scholarly sources you can go to on this um, and real questions you could be answering. Alistair McGrath's a good starting point, by the way. Yeah. Um, if you'd actually like read the books and stuff, yeah. Think hard about what these issues are. Again, I'll say the word teleology and I'll say the word prime mover. And I'm yeah. going to suggest to you, these are just starting points too, but I'm going to suggest to you, Professor Stick, that you not run off to hear your atheist guru explain why those things aren't necessary. And instead, <laughs> you investigate those things for yourself and see why they might be. And why somebody with an ideological presupposition that there is no God would want to dismiss the evidence. And yes. dismiss subjects like that. Um, and and it, it kind of goes back to well, what, what I call is like is like this this atheist notion that that religion is just like spinning a big roulette wheel and that they, they're all equally likely. It's like in what other circumstance do we assume that just because there are many possible answers to a question that all possible answers are equally likely? Furthermore, when a Jew when a Jew comes to the conclusion that he thinks there's a God, I think he's made a valid conclusion. Yes. When a Hindu comes to the conclusion that there's a God, or at least that he doesn't believe in materialism, he's come to a valid conclusion. And then hopefully what happens is when he starts seeking and realizing that everything can't be reduced to the laws of physics, because by the way, Professor Physic, uh, Professor Stick, everything can't be reduced, cannot be reduced to the laws of physics. Necessarily. The belief that everything can be reduced to the laws of physics unnecessarily entails a, a logical contradiction. Yes. Well, it, it, it's an unprovable idea, but although science, it's worse than unprovable, it, it leads to contradiction. Yes, it leads to contradiction and is visibly disprovable. I think. Um, yeah. All right. Why don't we just continue? Uh, uh well, what? there was uh, uh, something else I, I wanted to say. 
Oh yeah, uh, I just going back here. I think if, if a Jew uh, arrives at the conclusion that God exists, I love it when, when an atheist uh, they they try to uh, kind of gotcha me and say, "Oh well, well, why don't you believe in Allah?" I say, "I do." <laughs> <laughs> Allah is simply the Arabic word for God. You're not you're not getting one over on me, okay? In fact, in fact, Arab Christians and Aramaic Christians were using the term Allah before Muhammad was born. Yes. He took the term from the Christians and the Jews of the era, whether, you know, uh, so here, here's a little subtlety for you, uh, Professor Stick. Uh, smart theists believe there's only one God and that different people have different perceptions, some more correct than others about God. Not that hard when you think about it. Not that hard. Um, so, all right, should we keep going? Yes. All right, let's see. It's Christianity instead of any other religion. Hmm? I don't see Christianity being any more special. I began to realize it gave me this way of looking at things. That's what theory is. It's a way of beholding, a way of seeing nature, which actually made far more sense than my atheism. And I eventually moved away from atheism and embraced Christianity. What? How can atheism even be a method of obtaining knowledge? Atheism isn't even a claim. It's a negative. It's the null. But science can. Did you mean science? Because science and atheism aren't the same thing. And how reliable is the method that religion gives you? I'll give you a hint. Not reliable at all. Okay. It's okay. I, I, I <laughs> go ahead. Well, uh, no, I just, I just said, hey, because that would be a good topic. Not because I actually, have any because <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause laughs> He's such a gish galloper, just like Dwayne Gish, the creationist. This man is. Um, uh, he, he said he saw nothing special about Christianity. Oh, and that was so what? So what? We'll say there is something special about it, although it's true of all the other monotheist faiths. Science tends to come out of monotheism because polytheism tends to be less coherent and to have all kinds of weird rules about experimenting on things that a monotheist. Yes. A monotheist believes the universe is not God. A monotheist yes. believes the God, the universe is made by God, and therefore the monotheist thinks we're we're free to explore and experiment on it, and we won't be committing sacrilege or angering God just by experimenting, as long as we stay yes. with certain moral parameters like not yes. killing people and things like that. We can experiment on anything we want. That's one of the that's one of the reasons uh, science arose out of the Christian West. Yes. Where others were against science because they were afraid of demons and spirit forces and things like that. I'll also say Muslims and Jews made good contributions there too. Yes. And it says in the Bible, uh, actually several times, uh, God is the fixer of the laws of heaven and earth. Right. I, that, is the pre that is the presupposition of the scientific method, is that there's a fixity of laws that governs earth and so heavens, you know? That's right. Science requires the faith-based assumption that the laws of physics uh, uh, will continue to operate as they do. It can it, it, the faith-based position that the universe is intelligible and will remain so. Um, uh, that falsification works. I, I, yeah. I, all kinds of things that you actually can't prove that only seem to work redound from your worldview, and actually. It was positing that there was a God running things that led us to theories like the idea that there are forces, like the four forces in physics or whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm getting flashbacks huh? now. Huh? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> I, I know. It's, oh, my God. I mean, it takes an hour. To, I, there's a certain genius to modern atheism, which is that it takes you, you know, five times the time to respond to them. Yeah. And to throw out their bullshit. And then they just they just wear you down and then declare a victory. Yeah. By by the way, uh, uh, he, besides uh, uh, what we just said, uh, he he's also he keeps harping on this notion that religion is a way is a way of discovering and that science is a way of discovering. Again, I've never heard any religious person talk like talk like this. Uh, the idea that God exists is not a method of discovery it is a conclusion one can reach just like just like e equals mc squared is a conclusion one can reach just like jesus was sent to die for man's sins is a conclusion we can reach none of these are methods of arriving at truth they are conclusions that our own method of reason can can uh uh make us arrive at they're all the way, conclusions 
And by the way, to repeat the phrase that I know they hate, but is still irresputable, indisputably true, um, believing all of those things Rob just said are logical, rational conclusions based on evidence. Based on evidence. That's, That's your not, other teacher. Yes. Yeah, you're 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 allowed to come to other conclusions, but you don't get to say our views are irrational. Maybe you've met some irrational Christians who say, "I just believe." Well, such people may not be well trained in articulating what they believe. Um, that doesn't make them wrong. Honestly, honestly, I, I, in my opinion, when, when uh, Christians uh, say that, it's not really because that's what they think. It's because they have an atheist who's hounding them, and they don't have a, a ready-made response for them. And so maybe, yeah, they say, oh, it's just faith. I just believe, yeah. And, also, and, and uh, this is partially why I get irritated and why I do this work now is because for the first few years after I abandoned my atheism and became an atheist, I was still very lost and very insecure. And, and it was hard for me to articulate yeah. why I believed what I believed. And some of it was still confusing to me. Um, and then I would have people act like there was something wrong with me because I could not answer all their questions to their satisfaction, like yes. a trial or something. Like, oh, what? A, what? A, this what a, is this what a, is uh, basically what street epistemology is. is that you, you get people who aren't used to defending their faith. You start hounding them with questions until you reach some sort of a dead end. Yeah. Now, like for instance, I I believe in, in evolution. I believe in, in, in common descent. All that stuff. If if a young Earth creationist started badgering me and just hounding me with questions. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'd be able to get me at a dead end too, you know? In fact, I myself, I have a problem with creationists and it's the same problem that atheists have with creationists. Uh, uh, but I, I, I fully admit that there are probably many young earth creationists who know a whole lot more about biology than I do. Actually, that has to be a fact because there are some creationists who have degrees and have turned in respectable work because yeah. believing the earth is 7,000 years old does not, does not mean you can't do basic science. I'm sorry. Yeah even though they do, even though it is a strange thing to believe. Um, I just, I find creationists almost as annoying as atheists because for the same reason. They, they, they just think you're on trial and think everything's, you're ready for a debate right now. I think creationists drive people away from Christianity. They certainly drove me away. And I don't know if they influence Professor Stick here, but uh, <laughs> it, is interesting. it is interesting that his methodologies are a lot like certain creationists. Just run with your assumptions and make them over and over and over and over and over and yeah. over again. As if you're just being an inquirer when actually you're being an asserter. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. We don't hate you, Professor Stick, but really, good Lord. All right, should we keep going? Yeah. All right, let's see. I discovered to my delight it gave me this way of looking at the world that made sense of science. Why would it make sense of science? How in any way can religion make sense of science? Get that garbage out of here. I'm assuming you mean that the scientific discoveries make more sense to you if you think that an intelligent designer designed it that way. Well, I'm sorry, your inability to imagine a world in which nature itself can create its own phenomena and laws only says something about yourself, not science nor religion. That is a logically incoherent view. What you just said is is logically self-contradicting and horseshit. I'm sorry. He just he just revealed a faith belief that he has in there. By the way, an unscientific, unprovable, yes. entirely faith-based belief, which is that the 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 idea that nature just spontaneously does this shit. It is illogical. We I I can't underline that enough. It it is an illogical belief. There is no possible world in which that is true. We can be as sure as we can say anything that is horseshit. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Um, okay, keep going. Uh, okay. <laughs> I would argue that it makes less sense. What intelligent designer would create a universe that is 99% uninhabitable? What intelligent designer would create such unnecessary and roundabout signaling pathways and cells? What intelligent designer... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, I, okay I have something to say about this. It's, uh, it's the objection to the uh, fine-tuning argument that says, oh, well, so much of the universe is uninhabitable, therefore not fine-tuning. And the proper response to that is, okay, give me the exact percentage of the universe that would need to be inhabitable for the universe to be fine-tuned. And give me your reasoning for arriving at that exact percentage. That's no. right. It's just, a, it's just an intuitive hunch. No, because... Either God would make the universe smaller, or it would just be teeming with this chaos of life. Those are the only circumstances in which uh, uh, the, the universe could be uh, finely tuned or designed. 
Also, this is this is another example. I think I, I stole this from you, but I use it all the time now. Um, this is a, I think this is pretty much an example of the atheist seems to me are yes, exactly, exactly. I'm like, well, a lot of things can seem to you. Uh, I'll, give you science, I'll give you a scientific fact that I got from Professor John Lennox, which an astrophysicist backed me up on, backed him up on um, to me personally. Um, here's an interesting thing. It is plausible that there are many other intelligences in the universe and that there's other life all throughout the universe. And we're going to find aliens and it'll be all Star Trekky and stuff. That is really possible. And it's, that would not contradict with my Christian views in the least. Yeah. Actually, scripture makes it clear that there are other intelligences besides humans in the universe. So yeah. why would I be shocked to find them? On the other hand, the universe may be entirely empty and we may be the only intelligent life in it. That's also scientifically possible. Um, here's the interesting thing. Let's pretend we are the only intelligent life, which we could be. It turns out that if you look at the smallest known subatomic particle, is that a, is that a quark? I'm forgetting uh, what, the, what the smallest known particle is. From the smallest yeah. known particle to the furthest reaches of the universe that we know of, human beings in scale mathematically are right in the middle. It's the, the geometric mean, yeah which is another thing you can't really very easily explain unless yeah. the universe is fine-tuned for us yeah and yeah. infinitely powerful god who makes so many beautiful things for us to look at and wonder at um with pow powers vaster than human beings can even comprehend could easily make this entire universe just for us to explore yeah you're at because the Christian theology, amongst other things, says that's what God most wants us most of all to do is to love him and to have wonder and joy in what he's created. Yeah, so it's, it's a, it says the heavens declare the glory of God. It doesn't mean we must turn away from them and, 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 just, and just retreat into this, into this spiritual world. It's a, yeah. the, the, the physical world is an expression of, of God's love for us, you know? That astrophysicist I interviewed loves that phrase. What you just said, she quoted that same psalm to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, what, what's Professor Stick? You have a very narrow and constrained and limiting worldview, um, and you're missing out on a lot. But yeah. Let's just keep pushing through. No, 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 no. I have something important, and, and this actually uh, goes to a study. By the way, do you notice uh, we are, are citing a lot more studies and facts than Professor Stick is? <laughs> oh, yeah. I got, I got scientific references for everything I say, by the way. And no, because I don't have them in my hip pocket now doesn't mean I don't have them. Ask yeah. them. But just, you know, have some manners and ask, like, can you give me the references for X, Y, and Z? And I'll give them to you. Yeah, yeah. But they actually, they actually did a thing. Uh, where they primed people, you know, basically the, the uh, uh, scientific method of like priming people with images and then gauging their reactions afterwards. And so they kind of primed these people with images of, of galaxies and nebulae and like, and like flowers blooming. And then they, they tested them uh, on, on their uh, belief in God and they found seeing these beautiful images of nature increases people's theistic kind of inclination. It does not take away, it does not take away from their theistic inclination, but that just that just makes like intuitive sense. Yes, the beauty of the world would draw us closer to the notion of a creator. When we see the beauty of the world, we don't say, "Oh, it's just it's just because for no particular reason at all." That's yeah, right. and when you get beyond be primitive, what I can't, I'm sorry to make to give uh, you know certain Christians a hard time, but primitive Bible thumpers, when you get beyond that. I mean, one of the central theses of Christian theology is that beauty itself is God or is an aspect of God that you're looking yeah. at. And, and, and so beauty itself transcends humanity. And so when we see something beautiful, we're seeing a glimpse of God there. That's what we think. Yeah. And, 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 and so, again, that even goes back to exactly what you're saying there, Rob, which is that when you show certain awesome images like astronomy and um, I've gotten it from the ocean, uh, um, from being out in the desert. Uh, it, uh, yeah. People's sense of awe and wonder and majesty and a sense that there is a God comes upon them. And it turns out, by the way, we've got scientific studies on this too. It is natural and normal starting in early childhood for children to have that sense and for most people to have that sense that something huge is responsible for all this being here all the time. Yes. 
that's a natural conclusion humans draw. Now, why would they have that natural sense if there wasn't something to it? We just evolved a delusion, really? Yeah. We evolved a delusion. Okay, back that up. I, I've yet to see Daniel Dennett even try and back that up, by the way. And that opens up a whole other host of questions where somehow our, our, our evolved need for religion needs to be overcome by our unreliable uh, reasoning faculties for reasons, you know? All right, we, 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 we should stop within the next 10 minutes. So I don't think we're going to finish, but I want to get to one or two parts where he said here, let's see if we can just push through a little more. All these diseases that we spend so much money on studying. Give me a motivation for studying science. A motivation to studying science, huh? Well, that's interesting. Like what? Motivation to discovering the things that God created? Let me tell you what I think about that. Obviously, any motivation for science is a good thing. The more scientists we have, the better. But my point of view is that science would be much more interesting without the assumption that a God created the universe. How interesting can it be to explore something which was created by someone? If we started with the assumption of an intelligent designer, then what we are doing is merely attempting to discover the properties and mechanisms put in place by someone, which has high predictability, not to mention a lot of narcissism. In this universe, yeah, well, no, the, the high predictability is kind of part and parcel of, of, the, of the kind of assumptions of science. I, I've, I've had enough. I can't push through any more of this. I did watch his video all the way through. Uh, more scientists are a good thing. Actually, I'm going to argue with you that that's not true at all. Um, over the last 20 or 30 years, we have pumped more and more and more into getting people with science degrees. And the result has been poorer and poorer and poorer science and poorer and poorer and poorer scientists in terms of quality. Yes. At this point, there's a glut of science PhDs and science degrees. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, re multiple peer-reviewed, uh, respected uh, science journals now admit that huge areas of science now, you can't rely on any of the peer-reviewed stuff anymore. It's just a crapshoot whether you're getting anything. Yeah. Cool. Not Nothing. It seems it's like half the stuff isn't reproducible at all. Yeah. And uh, I mean, not every field is badly affected, but anything involving much money and status is. Yeah. Um, and so it's not a given that more scientists are a good idea. More good scientists are a good idea. And even him saying anything that gets people interested in science. Really? What if my interest in science is genocide? <laughs> he seemed, again, he's what I would call a scientismist, a science cultist. He thinks scientists, yeah. science is how we discover truth. So he doesn't, even, although I doubt if he can actually give a coherent definition of truth. Yeah. Right? need an atheist who can most will admit they think there is no objective truth which is one of the reasons um i think that there is a strong correlation between the drop in quality of science and the rise of ideological atheism in yes. the, sense. the scientific naturalists have been a disaster selfish uh, garbage we know that now uh, oh the naturalists have run out of gas. They have nothing to offer, which is why scientists and physicists especially are turning back to teleology and the prime mover and all these basic ancient questions because scientific naturalists have run out of gas. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, I mean, the guy I was debating who, who took his assumption that there's nothing beyond the physical world and tried to cram that into the, into the mouth of science and say, oh, so this is, a, this is a, a, a this is a, a conclusion of science it just makes me realize they don't actually have respect for science they like talking about science yeah. in, in broadest possible terms they don't actually have respect for it they just want it for what it can do for their own non-scientific ideology and the dumber ones among them and I, i'm going to say you know the people of average and even below average intelligence have really do speak of it now like a god science gave us yeah. ethics, and this is a threat to science they've made a religion out of it you've made a religion out of it professor stick whether you realize it or not you really have you believe all kinds of things about science that aren't true and that are just incoherent and silly um no. yeah. Continue, continue. Well, I was, I was going to change the subject and say later on, we're not going to get to it because I refuse to go more than an hour on this. Yeah. He does mention that he had the, you know, the process of becoming an atheist. He mentioned that he had that. And I'm glad that he recognized that it was a thinking process for him. Because if you think your way into something, you can think your way out of it. And I hope you think your way out of it, Professor Stick, because it is the most mind-numbing, mind-closing ideology possible to be an atheist. Yeah. It doesn't make you more logical. It doesn't make you rational. It doesn't even make you braver, in my view. Um, how, how, how do you think your way into a non-conclusion? How do you think yeah. your way into a lack of belief? 
Yeah, he, he said it's not a it's a non conclusion earlier, and then he admits it's a process to which he came to a conclusion because it is a conclusion. To be an atheist, you believe in the random causeless universe, and that there is no ultimate intelligence driving things. That's a conclusion, and so you from that conclusion you wind up concluding all sorts of other things. It is in fact inherently dishonest. In fact, it is propaganda to say that it's just lack of belief, um, and. And while I'm on the subject, let me just mention numerous scientists, including Einstein, Lemaitre, um, Newton, and countless others. In fact, most of the scientists who were responsible for the discoveries leading to the Big Bang were theists. And the Faraday, people, Maxwell, Kepler, Heisenberg, yes. That's right. Nobody likes All mentioning Lemaitre because he was a priest. But the guy who gave us the Big Bang Theory, just so you know, Professor Stick, I get tired of repeating it, but he seems to need to know it. Georges Lemaitre, a Catholic priest, a uh, Jesuit actually, gave us the Big Bang because he was studying the concepts of the, of the prime mover of Aristotle and the book of Genesis, and it gave him inspiration. And he thought, yeah. this is true. The universe must have had a beginning. I'm going to look for it. And that's how you got the Big Bang Theory. Oh, yeah. And by the way, uh, the scientific method itself, uh huh. Yeah, that, that was us. You're welcome. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The whole scientific peer review system. You can specifically yep. think not just the Christians, but the Roman Catholic Church. You. Can oh, but but Max, Max, we know so much more these days than those poor benighted people did back then. We know so much more. I uh, yeah, we know. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, so, uh, always like, okay. So what have we learned since then that proves that God doesn't exist? And, no, I don't have to prove anything. What have we learned that means yeah. that? Universe can make sense without a prime mover. What yes. is the one that makes sense that makes you know that a universe without a god makes sense? It doesn't make sense. And you're going if you're and if you're going to be shallow and say whatever, well, that what about you know? It's not Jesus. Look, understand the basic god God concept first. Once you have the idea of God and you accept that it is rational to believe there's a God, that it's a logical conclusion based on evidence because it is. Um, then you can start asking other questions like, does any religion have any truth to it? And does any religion have more truth to it than yeah. any other? Those yeah, are like I said, start from the presupposition that every religion is wrong. Just to start with that as your starting point. But look into God. That's right, because you don't have to address adopt any, yeah. any religion to get there. Um, yeah, you might wind up becoming religious, but hey, guess what? If you're careful, you might discover a religion that's totally compatible with your scientific rational worldview. There's yes. actually more than one, although I happen to think Orthodox Christianity is going to be the best one. Um, I'm not going to condemn you. Um, you know, I've got plenty of friends who believe in God who aren't even into Jesus. And we can still talk and be friends. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, what else? Should, I guess we should start wrapping up. We're just about to hit the hour mark. Professor Stick, we don't hate you, but we would love to talk to you if you um, would ever like to have a chat about this. Uh, v. Monroe, I wanted to mention, we had a great conversation this weekend with V. Monroe, the uh, Romanian atheist YouTuber comedian. He was really good to talk to, actually. I, I thought it was a nice okay. Um So look for that on my channel in the next day or two. That's um, an interesting business card, yeah. Yeah. Well, so what's up? So you got anything going on on deflating atheism? You well, I, I have good news and I have bad news. The, the good news is that there's finally at long last uh, signs of life on my channel. I've, I've had some activity in the past two weeks and there will be continuing activity uh, in, in the two weeks to come. So they're, they're, like I said, I've kind of been in a lull for various reasons. But yeah, my, my, my channel is starting back up. I can't kind wait. Of it back up and you know what even a, a video a month from you i love i do like your videos i really do i wish i could do those little short snappy ones like you do um just to tell everybody else on our side uh, escaping atheism has also been in a bit of a low because we had a major technical issues that took me out for almost two solid weeks uh, i'm back in the saddle now we have that interview with dr sarah salviander coming up uh, we've got a few other cool interviews uh pl planned please hit like please hit subscribe support yes. us Atheism.com, support deflating atheism. Go find him on Patreon, find us on Patreon. Um, we could always use some help continuing this. Tell your friends and enemies. All right. Have a have a good night. Any uh, have, say good night, Rob. Have a good night.